Uh, okay. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me here. As, actually, I think I uh, sort of, uh, you know, backing you to be able to speak here. Um, so today, my topic is um, the time when no man would dive into the bottom of the well to find the missing Pandora boss. Um, so. I'm so surprised that there's so many people here because if I am one, one of you, look at a title like this. This guy must be full of crap or a nut. All right, so um, I will explain it. Why did I choose this like a uh, title later on? But uh, I will talk a little bit about myself. Um, so uh, my name is Eden Kwan and I'm a creative coder. Uh, I'm a founder of um, studio uh, called Luzon, based in Bristol in U United Kingdom. Um, so uh, we mostly do like real-time focus like animations. Um, so uh, in this talk, even though I got a very artsy title, uh, I'll mainly talk about two things. The first thing is um, I want to show how good looking I am. See, like I put a big hat picture of myself up to the screen, all right? And uh, the second most important thing I want to talk about in this talk is about learning. All right, everyone want to learn, want to improve your skills, want to get to the next level. So I'm going to talk about that, all right? So, okay. So what have I learned in the last 10 years? The most important thing is I've learned is I realized that I'm, a not, I'm not an artist, all right? Like, I tried my best to, uh, to, to be an artist, but I realized that there's a fundamental difference between an artist or a, a designer or, or like a creative coder. Um, I've realized that I'm not particularly like, good at creating things from thin air. I am good at solving problems within uh, uh, a scope, uh, visually or like create, uh, whatever, creatively. Um, so, um, um, wait, hold on a second. All right, so in fact, in the last 10 years, I tried my best to be, try to be a, um, an artist, or actually, like, um, I'm, everyone have an unspeakable past. I had one as well. I'm gonna, you know, tell everyone here about my past. I used to be an artist, all right? I'm not talking about um, a singer who sing in the, the pub, that kind of singer. I'm talking about like I, I used to be a sort of like try to be celebrity kind of artist. Uh, I do a little bit singing and sing that is cool, kind of with celebrity. I'm, I'm from uh, like a far east uh, city called Hong Kong, all right? No one knows about these people, but that's fine. They're celebrity. And um, yeah, let's see, like, like what I said, half the talk is about how, showing how good looking I am. So, and this one as well, look at that. Oh, how young, how cool this guy is, all right? That's cool, right? Yeah. But the fun fact is that, like, I was uh, really bad at singing. And, um, I, yes, that's, that's true, that's true. I was really bad at singing. I'm not going to sing it here, so that's why. Um, and I, the reason why I, I became an artist is just because I thought it was a it's cool to be a you know, singer, and people, you, you thought that you're going to be like a celebrity and people you will follow you and stuff like that. But however, the reality is that because I was not a um, good singer, and then in this industry, it's, like, it's not always that cool. Sometimes you need to dress up like a clown, do sing, doing a stupid thing. And um, the most important thing is like, um, it didn't, I didn't earn any money. No. But the thing is, I signed up a contract, like I spent five years of my youth like doing something that I thought that is cool to be. Um, so there's like one big um, uh, advice I want to give, like if you, one of you are uh, a student, want to just want to um, be an artist, say it in the way that um, just because it's cool. So um, I want to say this, like you, you should be yourself and do something that you actually like to do, but not like you know, try to be some, someone else you're not. All right, this is like one of those, you know, like in the talk, like you will see some people talk about this kind of giving advice, that kind of thing. I try my best to do, do my piece. So, um, so how did I become uh, be uh, from, uh, from, from, from a singer to become doing like uh, what I did? It was, um, it was uh, like a pivot point on my life. And I, 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 I turned it from the, the, the 
from the singer to become a, a creative coder. It was like uh, because I was struggling, I, I didn't have money. And then uh, my cousin was like working in um, um, a company called Logitech in Hong Kong. Uh, she asked me like, oh, did you know how to make a flash um, application? All right. So you know, I was struggling. I don't have money. And um, do, do you know what, the, what did I say? I said, is it paid? Yes. Nah, nah. You, some people just said, yeah, no. You said, is it paid? It, yes. Then I said, hell yeah, I can do it. And, but, 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 but the fact is, like, at that time, I didn't know how to do any flash or whatever. I didn't even know like, very good at coding. So I, but you know, when you don't have money, you can do everything. All right? Someone asks you to do something, if it is paid, you can do everything. So uh, I get my first paid get, uh, as a freelancer, working directly with a direct client, a Logitech. You know, I don't think any you know, like freelancer started this way, really working for a big company as a freelancer when you, as your first gig. Um, so, um, so this was like a first dip of me, like a, for myself to try uh, doing uh, some po uh, visual programming thing. And uh, it was a paid job, all right? It was 500 euro, all right? It's not a day, it's a whole project. <laughs> I was not very good at maths, but um, I, will, uh, I know that, um, but it's still good money, all right? So I did it once, I did it twice. And the second time they asked me, and I said, they're like, all right, they just want to do a music, like a synchronized kind of thing. And I was like, all right, I, I saw some, like people do some paper vision thing, uh, like, you know, uh, it's 3D, oh, it's get going, all right? Uh, 3D flash things. Um, and this, this is my second project. I want to try that. I want to learn it. And then I, I, I proposed that, oh, let's try to do some 3D thing. And then I did it. And then they like it. And this is like way more money project. It's like 1,400 euro or something for the whole project. So, um, so I, I learned it. And I love do, doing what I, what I was doing. So, uh, and then I, I um, but, but this, I, I don't have any portfolio. So I need to create a portfolio. I create a portfolio site. Um, so sorry. Because right now, when you want to load a flash page, you need to uh, open IE. Uh, these days, it's like they block everything. You know, they don't like it. So um, I gotta close it. So we gotta open the Internet Explorer, the mighty Internet. Wait, what's going on? No, 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 no. Oh, sorry, the IE is here. All right. One second. I'm gonna move it here. So this is my flat first. Flash project. I thought it's oh no, HTML is not gonna work or something like you know your tagline. Um, this is my first project. Ah, it's ridiculous. So uh, when you uh, click, you open the project, this thing pour up in the water, and you when you how do you gonna see what did I do? You open it, you shake it to open it. All right, ah, uh, motion, my friend, motion. And, uh, and also there's so many cool stuff. I thought at that time it was a cool thing to do. I. Uh, you know, like uh, how much I like to show myself on the screen. So um, I even have something that you can um, type the message. Oh, wait, sorry. Put it on myself. Look at that. Ooh, it's creative coding, huh? Uh, also, I have a contact page. Look at that. Ooh. Ah, it was like this website won me a site of a day of favorites of water. Well, I don't think you can do it. These days, but um, this website, for some reason, won me uh, a job. Um, so working in a beautiful city called New York. All right. So it was pretty, pretty amazing. I will, I consider myself very lucky because like I didn't have any uh, like I don't know did anyone try to apply the working visa in America before here. Anyone? It's pain in the ass. Like they are, they're such a dick. Um, so like. They, they, you need to have a um, um, four years bachelor degree, uh, which I don't have it, and then or you can have a uh, 12 years working experience equivalent, equivalent working experience. I didn't have that either. So, uh, but luckily, my high school name is called something college. All right, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So they, they probably think that these Chinese guys must be a genius, like, you know, 12 years old, study in the college for six, seven years, all right? So that's, I guess that's the reason I got my visa. So I, I, I was so lucky to work in, the, um, in America, all right, and then learn from the best. Actually, my first 
agency experience. All right, but I worked there as a Flash developer, even though I applied Visa as a Flash developer, but I have never done a single Flash project at that uh, New York, New York uh, advertising agency. By the time, like, you know, uh, I, I was like in, in New York, uh, I need to start learn, uh, doing HTML website. Um, I'm not talking about doing HTML5 website like what you're doing right now. I'm talking about we need to make a website that support to 96. You know how frustrated I was like when I was doing some, you know, that animation become doing something like, you know, I can't, I, I can't even do a, like a um, transparent background, like, you know, use, uh, of, a, of an image or whatever. Um, so it was frustrating, and, and I, but, I, but the good thing is like I've learned a lot because like I, I, I start learning a completely different skills, which is uh, HTML. And um, luckily, there's so many talented people in that agency I worked at. Um, so um, the one of the developer there, uh, his name is uh, Sylvain Tran. He's uh, he's a founder of um, of a created agency right now in the, um, in France. So um, so that guy is, is very nice. Like he knew that like you know oh you want to do some cool stuff yeah I know so many people so I'm gonna introduce you to some agency. So like he, he introduced me to a lot of like a French um, uh, studio. So I was uh, so grateful. I'm still so grateful about it. So that's why like if you go to my uh, personal well, I haven't updated for a while. Like uh, all these websites are French, you know, uh, company based it, and uh, I don't speak French. Like, and and the good thing is like because of this uh, connection, I met some awesome guys like uh, Nicholas and some random other amazing people here. So um, and while I was working this kind of awesome freelance project, you know, um, this particular. Portrait uh, is a particle. My first WebGL doing shader, that kind of uh, portrait. Um, it made me want to improve my skill in computer graphic, like doing like particle stuff. So, um, so that led me to. All right, I can go back. All right here. We go. So, all right, I talk a lot. Like, so I'm gonna just demo it. You know, easier this way. So I'm gonna show you my first uh, sort of like a series of. Um, Demos uh, using particles. Uh, it's called I call it particle love. All right, I'm gonna show you here. Oh, maybe I should use the local host one. It's faster, but let me see if I can do it. So I can do it. Oh, okay. What's going on? Huh? Shit. Ah, all right. It's called particle love. Um, so of course I choose high quality. I'm using my uh, a MacBook Pro, all right? <laughs> so it can run this awesome graphic. Yeah. So this is um, particle love. It's all particle floating around. And the first one I did is um, I tried to um, I learn a little bit of like GPU, GPU kind of thing, and um, and I want to combine it with a little bit of physics uh, using uh, side sign distance view. So, oh, can you see that? Oh, damn it. I didn't check it. It's not working. The leap motion. All right. OK, whatever. But I can use my mouse. All right. So you can use uh, the hand to interact with the particles. Um, so how did I do that is um, I basically uh, use from the leap motion, I get uh, all those uh, position um, quaternion of that uh, joint, the no uh, finger joint. And then I pipe. This is probably the most stupid way to do it, but I'm gonna. I, I use it. And it works. So basically, it's something like this. Um, this is shader toy. It's basically I pipe the whole chunk of uh, uniform data, and then you know you, once you have those data, and uh, you can use those uh, scientist distance field function from you know you, if you go to IQ. Um, it has like so many awesome, you know, uh, distance function. You can just pick it. I used um, I used cylinders and this hexagon thing to form a hand, and that's good because um, they have all the functions. I can perfectly match it to uh, to the geometry. So this is how I do the physics. All right, because um, scientists don't feel sort of like you can basically in the 3D space you give a 3D coordinate. You you know the 
distant to the surface of this deep pre, uh, defined shape or geometry, all right? And, um, and then you can use that to calculate the physics. A pretty straightforward, simple way, but um, I, um, it was quite interesting. So after this project, um, I was trying something a, li a little bit different. Uh, even though I put it into this whole particle thing, uh, this is not really particles. Um, it is a quite constraint. It's a little bit more artsy kind of look, but I'm still waiting for it thing coming out. All right. So um, I use um, you know use a similar idea of like those uh, points, um, particle points, moving around, and but I connected some selected point with uh, with line. And then uh, to form this organic, cool-looking kind of, um, it's too dark, I can't really see it. Uh, maybe I have, uh, OK, and yeah, now you can see it. So this kind of, um, I don't know how to call that, that web-like thing, all right? So it's, it's pretty interesting, all right? So it's sort of one of my art pieces, all right? I, like what I said, I try to be an artist. So that's why I create one of these, at least. Um, then after this, um, I'll keep showing demos. I'm not going to talk too much because I have, I've, I'm done talking. Um, the next thing I did, I think, is this one. It's called the spirit. All right. I think uh, some of the people have seen it before because this one was used in, uh, I think it's a Google I.O. or something. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, just like using curl noise to do the, um, si uh, the, the simulation. And then I add a little bit of motion blur about it. Oh, one good thing uh, I want to mention is, uh, is this little thing. Let me pause this. Pause. All right. Ah, like I used a technique that um, Simon uh, suggested. It's, uh, it's, uh, he, he named it a new particle. It's quite interesting idea that uh, because using um, alpha blending is expensive. So his idea is like using optical illusion. Idea is like a triangle. Solid triangle, and then you next frame you flip it upside down. Then you will sort of have a star-shaped thing. The spike are semi-transparent. This middle one is solid. So I think it's a very interesting idea, but it doesn't work very well with my version because, like, it's, it's sort of like if you think about it, it's sort of like temporal filter in your brain kind of thing. But um, because my simulation is moving too fast, is it doesn't really work very well. But when you pause it, it looks. Interesting, you know, like a, 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 a different way to present this kind of uh, particle. Um, so yes, uh, and also I applied the motion blur. All right, so I'm gonna explain a bit motion blur. Here. Normally, when you do motion blur in um, you know um, real time animation, you do things like you know uh, you have the camera movement, all right, you have the matrix things, and also you have you, you need to draw the motion vector of anything moving objects on your scene, then you can reconstruct um, the sampling. But, but however, when you do particle, uh, apply the motion blur on particle, it's difficult because if you have one particle, you, you draw the motion vector into it on that pixel, the sampling, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't gather the eno enough information to form the, form, form the line. So I use the stupid, stu most stupid approach to do the motion blur. It's like, oh, what about the whole screen? I draw for every thing, single pixel, I draw a line. All right, uh, you're laughing. It's because it's like pretty stupid. It's like super slow. All right, of course, I, I downscaled it and, and try it. It looks pretty interesting and, um, and a little bit slow. Very slow, but um, I think it's like, but, but but it's just for that demo purpose. It just it works fine, and if you downscale it low enough, and you it's sort of like, uh, yeah, it, it works pretty good. So this is like another thing I've learned. Um, and afterward, I did done a larger particle. So what should I do next? And more particles. All right, this one I try something a little bit different. All right, um, I always want to try something like you know, sort of screen space, sort of blur kind of like um, uh, effect. All right. Oh, why the this thing is not on? All right, let me restore the motion blur here. So I pause it. So you can see something like a liquid kind of looking. It looks pretty cool. I love that feel. It's really a naive uh, implementation, whatever. But uh, what? 
I did here is just, um, I have a blog post to explain what's going on. And uh, I don't know if I have properly not going through it because it's running through time. And if you go to the website, click the link, have a look, that's it, all right? So um, is, I, I was using um, a Mac app to do the lighting. So there's no lighting, which means. <laughs> um, so but because of the distortion of the whole, whole um, uh, particle as uh, pupil particles, it, it makes it look like some liquid kind of subsurface or whatever look, So which, which is like a very interesting approach. And afterward, of course, more particles, right? Um, it's a similar approach, but I was using, um, uh, instead of using MATLAB, I'm using light calculation, sort of like have a light depth direction and calculate it, and which is sort of OK looking. And also, I'm mixing the color as well. But um, yeah, this was my um, particle love experience, all right? So what's next? What have I learned? And um, I've learned a few things. I can use SDF like, uh, to do some physics. So many people use it on ray matching, doing some rendering. And I try something different to audio. It's cool. And, and also, there's so many different ways to render the particle. Because before that, I saw so many particles like um, um, rendering is just emissive. It's cool. But if you add some shadow in it, I sort of like make it sort of like a real object, all right? So not just like abstracted. Thing, so which is pretty cool and um, and don't know. All right, I gotta keep it running because otherwise I will be run, running out of time. So the next things uh, after I did a lot of particles, I tried to do a little bit different. Um, so I did this hair thing. Uh, I'm gonna show it here with um, the, the, the. All right, so I know. Oh, why I can't open this? I think maybe the URL is wrong. Let me see. Um, ah, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna click it through here. All right. So, okay. Luckily, it works. So, uh, I create these things. Um, so I'm gonna quick, quickly talk through it. So. Drawing line is sort of like drawing particle. It's a similar idea. It's like, but the only difference is like you have a bunch of particles, but some of them have some constraint to form a line with a distant constraint. And what I did here is just a um, bunch of line uh, and then draw some uh, instant uh, tube to form that kind of tube. And also, I have uh, different models. This one is cool one. All right. And I also have, you can adjust the, you know, like the, the hair string and length, you know, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to show too much about him. Um, and also, you can use it in animated models. And uh, it's one interesting about this project is that it's, um, it's, not, it's, it's not just the motion. It's, it's also about the, the, the rendering. The rendering um, is very interesting because I, I start to learn some uh, offline rendering things, and I render some lighting uh, bake, baked into the texture. Then I can dynamically change um, the color of the of the light, and because it's like I have free light, free light is perfect because I can bake in RGB different color, and I can capture the diffuse color. And also after the light changing, I render the local Q map, so we can have a little bit more interesting, you know, lighting. Uh, sort of global illumination kind of shit. All right, so like, like that. It's pretty cool. It's another thing I've learned. Um, and then after that, OK, oh, OK, I, you don't have time now. All right, so what have I learned? Uh, yeah, um, so um, sometimes you can pre-bake information, which is great. And you can, you can pre-bake information rather, rather than pre-bake the, the color itself. Then you can dynamically change it, and pretty cool. Um, so <laughs> next things, so like I've tried to like improve my uh, graphical skills. So I tried some, something silly. I shouldn't do this, and it was wrong. Um, I score, I, because I did that global illumination with like pre baked stuff. So I want to try something called uh, voxel comb tracing, which is like a real time uh, global illumination technique. Um, it's a little very dark for some reason in this room. All right. So what um, this voxel comb tracing is basically. Uh, 
about two part. One is uh, vocalization, which is like convert all the whole scene. Oh, I'm gonna stop playing it and uh, into a vessel. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, maybe the, uh, like this in the vessel. And then the next step is like uh, you do the mapping and then stuff like that. And the last last step will be the rendering. The rendering is just like a, you comb trace it, and it's a very 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 expensive thing because uh, for every single pixel you will need to um, trace it in a way that um, for the diffuse you need to suit around six cone. And then but because it's, I'm using a WebGL one, WebGL one you don't really have like three D texture. You need to uh, interpolate the, the, the Z. Um, Assets and also the mean map thing, which means like four tap for one sample. It's not just that because you tr uh, comb trace it with a direction, you will need to uh, think about which direction, left or right, up or down. So you need to multiply by three. So which means one one sample within the cone, you need to trace four multiplied by three, which is twelve. 12 tap for one sample, which is stupid. But I would just like do it and just for fun and see what's it like. And and the thing is like some. Uh, it, it's good thing is it comes with uh, AO and um, I don't know for some reason not quite working. But all right, because of time, I'm gonna like skip that. All right. So um, so what have I learned is um, yeah, like what I said. Blah 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 blah. All right. <laughs> what have I learned is that like don't do this kind of thing in WebGL because it's not gonna work. All right. Don't do that. All right. So better spend time to learn something else. So what did I spend time to learn? I learned something called Houdini. It's a magic thing. All right. So uh, it's a it's a tool called um, um, Houdini. Uh, it's not the CSS Houdini. Eh? Uh, is um, is um, side effects uh, a, a sort of like more more modeling to Houdini, so I use it to create um, uh, uh, experiment called uh, surface floater, I believe. Let me close this, close this. Oh wait! Oh no 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 no. No 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 no! I don't want that! I don't want that! I don't want that! Okay. All right. So quickly, one, two, three, four. All right. Okay. So it's um, da, 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 close it. So you can see something like this. It's some items floating around. Like this experiment is based uh, mostly inspired by uh, those guy um, called. Um, oh wait. Why, why I can't see the okay. Called uh, Actama. So these guys, they did a lot of like cool stuff in VFX, and I just basically learned it from uh, you know from this uh, tutorial, but use it uh, at the end apply it in WebGL. So uh, what it does is just a, uh, from the model I create a uh, scientism field uh, as data, and then I put some items floating in, and also I apply a little bit of physics. So uh, I've also uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you things. Okay, okay, okay. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh my God, I'm gonna skip that. All right, I'm gonna skip that. Uh, I have a scientist slim field generator using Houdini, so you can pipe anything in, and you can get the texture, which is looks, which looks like this. All right. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! There's something wrong with that. Uh, okay, this one? Nope. All right, I think I, I lost it. But anyway, good thing is I can skip to the next slides. Oh my God! Where the hell is that? Oh my God! All right. Okay, so voila. Okay, so next thing is uh, I'm going to talk about is the like vertex animation. Vertex animation basically is just a move target, all right. But uh, it's quite interesting that you can do what you can do with um, uh, vertex animation, which is I need found in on the browser, drag it back in easier. All right, um, go back, go back, go back. A vertex animation. 
HTML. So you can do something really cool. I can't really see. Oh, can you see it? Oh, God. I should make it brighter. But it's like some liquid dropped it two second animation, all right? So you can do real time, sort of real time, all right? <laughs> it's like pre baked it like, um, into the verdicts, um, even doing fluid simulation. And um, how do you do that? It's you just basically do the simulation and save all those information into a texture. So what does it look like? Um, it looks like this. It's around uh, 30 megabytes of data. All right. So it's totally worth it to for two seconds, in my opinion. Um, but there, there's so many ways to optimize it. Uh, because of the time, I cannot really talk about it. So it's basically, there's, there's so many ways to do it. It's like you can use frame blending. So you can blend. Uh, you can uh, just store the data of um, the first frame and the fifth frame, and also save the velocity of that, um, that, that, that vertex point, and then you can inter cross fading kind of thing, and then you, know, you still get a very good result uh, with, I think, like you can skip five frames with this. All right? So file size will be roughly smaller, like in three megabytes maybe. And also, like, you know, it depends on, the, on your scene, on your. Uh, on your in experience, you can hide something that is not visible. So, you know, there's so many ways to optimize it. But uh, because of uh, time issue, I can't really talk about it. Um, so, so, what's next? Um, I have learned this kind of blah, blah, blah. So, I'm going to talk about Hero Shot. So, what is Hero Shot? It's like, I believe that every digital experience should have something looks amazing, looks nice. So, um, so, because that, I, uh, I decided to, uh, to show you a website. Uh, this is a totally self-promotion because it is a prototype website of uh, my studio, <laughs> of course. Um, this is a very simple, um, simple website with some web gel in it. So why am I? All right, so uh, it's too dark. Uh, my, my whole theme is dark, so it's a little bit annoying. Um, so it is uh, some bunch of like uh, tube floating around, and uh, we have like a point light. It sort of have a little bit of fake subsurface gathering kind of thing, but actually the, the idea was like taking from this, um, and this guy is like uh, some analytical uh, subsurface gathering. It's cheap and it's good. Just copy and paste, use it. And uh, some a little bit of, um, you know, Good old reaction diffusion. Some we um, ah, there's some 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 cool stuff I want to talk about. But the main core thing I want to talk about is this one. <laughs> this is uh, my hero shot, uh, the hero shot of my website. So this is a video, but combined it with real time, and the camera like the camera angle can rotate around, and also have some you know design overlay task, you know, huh? That's cool, right? So how did I do that? It's just I I create uh, I ran the the, the visual, and then use the visual to uh, render another video with a 3D scene. And then in real time, I render a 3D scene again. But because I stage in the way that I use a very low polygon, like, you know, a shape, I put all those, like, uh, importance uh, of the geometry on the side of the uh, character. Because the most important thing you, uh, about this shot is the outline of it. Like, like the, this, this area is not important because, um, because you basically pick up most of the information from the video anyway. And then, um, and of, of course, I save all those, um, you know, uh, the camera movement, uh, look at camera uh, animation to, uh, um, to, to JSON file, and then load it in, and something like that. So it's pretty cool. It's combined video and also a real-time animation, all right? Pretty dope. Um, so, and also, uh, I have this one, have, of, of course, particles, have us, I pre-baked um, uh, animated, like, um, sort of um, matter ball kind of look, and then pre-baked the, 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 the normal and, and the depth into the texture, and then render it in real time with the same volumetric scattering stuff. And also, I have this scene, which is, uh, I have uh, so many people running around. It's uh, using a, a vertex animation as well. And this, uh, and, and I have uh, some, some um, some, some foggy look, people kind of style, uh, look and feel. It's pretty cool. Um, it's, and it's very cheap. It, the whole website can want, run it on my uh, iPod Touch. I test it. Um, because, like, because of using a, a vertex animation, everything here 
is just um, the point moving, move, movement, or as we can we can blend inter interpolate it. When I, if the character running to the left and I blend from the, uh, the closed simulation, for I have three data set and blend between it, so you can um, sort of have the real time simulation per se, and uh, I can put 20 characters in it and still running very very smooth. All right, so it's almost get to the end of it. Oh, the la one last project I want to talk about. All right, still have four minutes. That's great. This is uh, this is the project I, uh, I, I I'm I, I'm very proud of like the the the, the stuff that like I've learned and then uh, the create of such a visual like this. Uh, I call it the the lost your way in nature. The I want to tell the story of uh, using um, high quality visual to demonstrate. Um, a 3D scene, and it was supposed to be a VR. It was accepted by a SIGGRAPH uh, two years, years ago for, as a web VR demo. However, because, because of some political issue, I couldn't keep working on that. Uh, until recently, early th this year, I obtained the IP back, so I can keep working on that. Um, I'm working on an, another version, which is like, because this one is just a sort of like graphic demo to showcase um, you know, the graphic, the nice graphic of it. Um, but um, yeah, like so, I, I'm gonna quickly talk about what I do here. So remember, I talk, uh, I do that voxel cone tracing thing. I said that don't use it. But however, you can do some trick about it. All right, you, you can you can you can use the sim similar idea, but not uh, doing the doing the expensive one um, version. So what did I do here is um, instead of uh, using uh, the good thing about it is like every. Point, every circle here is a light, point light. You can consider point light. So I have like 4,000 uh, 4, lights here. And then all the lights is rendering into a 3D texture. Um, but good thing about it, this point light thing is like we don't need to care about which direction. So I can just use one. Uh, instead of using three tap, I can use one tap to collect the light. And also for the Z value, I, I have to do that. But for the mean map level, um, I would just use the integer level. I just like. Nah, I don't care about the, you know, how accurate anyway. So uh, because the whole thing is, uh, is an ice cave, I don't really care much about the occlusion and everything, so which is I can skip a lot of details. But then uh, combined with like some triplanar, and also I have a, I rendered a whole cave with um, some uh, emissive uh, map, which is like sort of a thickness map kind of thing. Um, I can based on that value to uh, sort of jitter the, the, the ray uh, origin to create this kind of um, sort of look like an ice kind of uh, object, you know? It's pretty cool. And uh, I think this is uh, one of the most, like, you know, um, beautiful thing I've ever made. And, um, and all those post processing effect is like just, uh, just copied from some other people, you know? Uh, nothing to mention, all right? Um, so, uh, that's that's pretty much everything I'll, uh, I'm gonna talk about. It. Yeah. Um, so, any questions? <laughs> any questions? <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, I got some time. By the way, my studio is hiring. If anyone want to join working on some beautiful looking project. Please DM me, all right? Uh, 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 thank you. Uh, you can find my Twitter, email, and stuff here. All right? <laughs>